Now, in this lecture, I want to give you an overview of how Bitcoin works. This is so when we move forwards into the other sections and lectures within the course, you'll understand the foundations of Bitcoin, allowing you to then build upon that and understand the more, let's say, complex topics that make Bitcoin work. So let me put it out there and say that Bitcoin is a form of digital currency, more often than not referred to as a cryptocurrency. It's created and held electronically. And on top of that, no one single person controls the Bitcoin network. Now, you may have noticed that I mentioned cryptocurrency. If you weren't aware, there are literally hundreds of cryptocurrencies out there. Many of them have little or no value, but Bitcoin is the most valuable cryptocurrency out there by far. So let's now break that term cryptocurrency down and focus on the term currency just for this moment. Bitcoin can be used as a currency to go and buy things electronically, just as you would do with any other currency. So in that sense, as a currency, it's like many others. It can be exchanged for goods or services. But one of the most important characteristics of Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. This refers back to what I just mentioned a few moments ago, where no single person controls the network. It's part of the decentralized nature of Bitcoin. No single person or institution controls the network. Now, as you may be aware, large banks and banks of countries control the flow of money within those countries but not with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a community-based currency. Now, those large banks just simply produce more and more money to cover the national debt. But what that then does is devalue their currency. So printing more money and putting it into circulation does end up hurting the people of the currency because their country's currency has been devalued. But Bitcoin isn't like that. It isn't created behind closed doors by bankers. It's open source. So really anybody can get involved with it and process and theoretically anyone can start creating Bitcoins through a process known as mining, which we'll be covering later in this course. Now, just so you're aware, the Bitcoin mining process is completely digital in its approach, as is Bitcoin. But like I said, I'll help you understand the Bitcoin mining process a lot more later in this course. However, I will give you a brief description of Bitcoin mining while you're here. So Bitcoins are mined using computer power in a distributed network across the world. But even with all that power, you can't create unlimited Bitcoins. Only 21 million Bitcoins can ever be created, ever. It's a rule that is enforced by the Bitcoin protocol, which is essentially the rule book for Bitcoin and was created at the time of Bitcoin when that was created by its mysterious founder. Now, if you've mined, or have one whole Bitcoin, that Bitcoin can be broken down into smaller parts. Much in the same way dollars can be broken down into cents, Bitcoins can be broken down into Satoshis. But I'll go over more of that in terms of Bitcoin's denominations in the next few lectures. So if you've seen the logo of Bitcoin or let's say the branding of Bitcoin, it often looks like a gold coin, hence Bitcoin being more often than not referred to as the digital gold. But remember, it isn't actually based on gold, it's based on mathematics. So 
That's everything for this lecture in terms of giving you an overview of Bitcoin. I just wanted you to have that brief overview of Bitcoin before getting more deeper into understanding what Bitcoin is and how it works within this course. But just before we end, I want you to be aware that Bitcoin is a community currency. Anyone can get involved at any stage.